What's going on everybody and in honor of spring training officially beginning tomorrow pitchers and catchers finally report tomorrow uh, I wanted to make a video about all of the top offseason moves what move I think is the best move of the offseason but as always before we get into that leave a like down below helps me out a ton lets me know you guys want to see more MLB content like this so hit that subscribe button we're so so close to our goal of 100 subscribers so I can finally give away a free jersey and free copy of MLB The Show 21. I also started a podcast called The Diamond in the Rough Podcast. Those links are going to be in the description below along with all of my social links. And last but not least, comment down below what you guys think the, the best move of the offseason was. Let's get into it. So the biggest free agents were obviously Trevor Bauer, JT Real Muto, George Springer, and DJ LeMayhew. And... I and the way I'm going to rank this is based on how I think that move uh, contributes to the team, makes them a better team. Um, so in fourth place, um, and this honestly, you wouldn't think so, but at the same time, it doesn't surprise you once you think about it. Out of these big free agents that signed and moved places, um, in fourth, I'm going to put JT Lemuto going back to the Phillies. And that's just because I don't think he changes their team enough. I still think Everyone knows this. I still wholeheartedly believe that the Phillies are a fourth place team. They just need to sign a lot more pitching if they want to be in contention with the Mets and the Braves in that division and even the Nationals. So I definitely think the, I mean, JT Romuto was on the Phillies last year and they didn't make the playoffs and they weren't that good. I know they, their bullpen was straight up the worst ever in history, but that doesn't mean that JT Romuto signing back changes anything. They only got a couple pitchers this off season. So I don't know how their team is much improved. Um, you can't imagine they're going to be as bad, but still, JT doesn't do enough for this team for me to consider him being a huge offseason addition. Uh, well, I, he is a good addition, but if he had went to a team like the Mets, then maybe he would have more of an impact on some of these teams. Uh, oh, and the, what I forgot to mention, uh, those were the four biggest free agents, and then obviously the biggest um, name that got moved was Francisco Lindor. Uh, he was in the trade, obviously, to the New York Mets, so that's going to be listed here as well. Now, the, again, that being said, Jitri Muto is the best catcher in baseball, and you would, again, you would think that he would make a big impact on a team, but not when he re-signs with the team that he was already on and that didn't make the playoffs and they didn't sign any pitchers. They only got Archie Bradley and Jose Alvarado, really, and a few other depth pieces, but they're still not going to be as good as the top three teams in that division. The Braves are a lot better than them, the Mets are a lot better than them, and the Nationals are a lot better than them. So, I'm sorry, Phillies fans. You can come at me if you want. JT Romito is going to be really good. Teamed up with Bryce Harper. That offense is really good with Reese Hoskins and Didi Gregorius. They've got a lot of pieces, but not on the pitching side of things. So, unfortunately, I don't think JT does enough for them to make it a huge impact deal. Now, coming in fourth place, it's going to be my Yankees re-signing DJ LeMahieu. And I think these moves just aren't as big because they did re-sign with their former teams. Um, but again, the justification for that is they, they desperately needed to re-sign DJ LeMahieu. They would have been a much worse off without him. He's been their MVP the last two seasons. He's been so, so good for them. And as a Yankee fan, I thank God he came back. But this does again. This doesn't totally address everything they needed to do. Uh, they've gotten some. They've gone out and had, in my opinion, a really good offseason. They signed Kluber. They traded for Tyone. They've gotten Darren O'Day, some other pitchers. So I'm very happy with their offseason. But in terms of the biggest free agent names out there and like the impact they have on their team, the Yankees definitely didn't make the biggest, most impactful move of the offseason because DJ. He's going to lead off for them. He's going to be really good. He's going to play decent defense. He can slide over to third base if you need him to. He can slide over to first base. I mean, he won the batting title last year. He's got some pop. That short porch in right field certainly helps him out a lot. But the Yankees, the biggest problem with the Yankees was starting pitching depth and bullpen depth. We saw that in the postseason when you have to go to J.A. Happ in game two of the ALDS. You know you're in a sticky situation. No offense, J.A. Happ. Just kidding, all defense. What am I talking about? I don't think DJ does enough for these Yankee team to be considered an impact move as much as some of the other guys ahead of him on this list. But, I, again, I'm very, very happy they re-signed him. So that brings us to number three. And this might surprise some people because he was probably the best free agent out there this offseason. And that's going to be Trevor Bauer. I, and I will justify that momentarily. Trust me when I say that Trevor Bauer is really, really good. And he got the money he deserved. But the Dodgers... <laughs> I mean, I said this in my reaction video. All right, there we go. Trevor Bauer does a lot for this Dodgers team. He really does. He's really good, and I'm not saying he didn't deserve the money that he got, because I think he did. He pitched really good last year. He won the Cy Young. 
even though Jacob deGrom should have won, but that's besides the point. But the, there's a lot of problems with Tre Trevor Bauer uh, going to the Dodgers for me, and that's one, Trevor Bauer pitched in the worst division in baseball last year in the NL Central and the AL Central. And that's not a, a knock on Bauer, but he's going to face a lot m better offenses this year. One, he's going to face more of the league. Two, the Padres have a really good offense. The Giants have a surprisingly good offense. I mean, he's going to have to face real hitters this year. No offense, NL Central. but So he's, I don't expect him to go out and be as good as he was, but he's still going to be really good. But the Dodgers are the Dodgers. Like, he's not a franchise impact team. The Dodgers were already a World Series favorite before they signed Trevor Bauer. Yes, it makes them even more of a favorite, but baseball is baseball for a reason. you got to play the games. You don't know who's going to win until you get there. Till the game is already done. Trevor Bauer isn't as impactful as the two guys ahead of him on this list because he doesn't address a huge area of need for the Dodgers. They already had a really, really good rotation, one of the best in baseball, and now they get even better, which is just insane to me. Again, if Trevor Bauer had gone to the Mets, maybe we'd be talking about it differently. He'd be higher on this list. For now, Trevor Bauer to the Dodgers isn't, a, isn't the biggest deal of the offseason for me because the Dodgers were already so stacked to begin with. Now, number two, and this is, numbers one and two were really hard for me to decide. You could argue that maybe even they should be flip-flopped. I don't really know exactly where my opinion stands on this, but I'm actually going to go Francisco Lindor to the Mets as my number two deal, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, but Francisco Lindor, obviously, he's a huge upgrade over Ahmed Rosario at shortstop. He's a franchise player. I would have loved him on the Yankees. I think any team would love to have him. Except for the Indians for some reason. Sorry, Indians fans. Francisco Lindor is coming off of a tough season for him. His worst offensively, his worst offensive season yet. But it still wasn't bad. I mean, I think he hit in the 260s. He didn't, he didn't do great, but it's still above average. He's got elite defense. And there's no reason to believe that he's going to be as bad as he was in 2020. He's definitely going to bounce back and be the Francisco Lindor we all know and love. He's still young. I mean, and he does a lot for this team. He's a switch hitter. He brings a veteran impact to that roster. Uh, like I said, he's a big upgrade over Ahmed Rosario. He's going to bring so much energy in life and play way better defense than Rosario. And it allows them a lot more versatility. They can move a guy like McNeil over to second base, and then they have an outfield. I mean, they've, got, they've signed some different pieces, but they've got Dominic Smith, who can play the outfield. Brandon Nimmo can play the outfield. They've signed Kevin Pillar. Of course, they have Michael Conforto. It gives them a lot more depth and versatility by signing by trading for Francisco Lindor, uh, and not to mention the production that he's going to have compared to Ahmed Rosario. I'm not saying Ahmed Rosario is a bad player either, because Francisco Lindor is a franchise player. He's so good, potentially the best shortstop in the game. And whenever you get the best shortstop in the game, it's going to be a top tier move. Um, and as I'm saying that, I'm, I'm almost rethinking my, my top one and two pick, but I, I got to go with it. I got to go with my guts, stick to my hot takes. Just like I'm always supposed to. Yeah, like I said, Lindor does a lot for this team. He's going to be really good. I expect him to be the best. I'm not saying he's going to be the best shortstop in baseball last year, next year, but he's going to be damn close. He's going to be really good for them. And he's going to bring a lot of excitement and energy to that Mets team that they haven't had in a long time. And he's going to sell tickets, and that's important. So my number one move of this offseason, again, this might surprise some people, but I'm actually going to go with George Springer signing with the Toronto Blue Jays. And the reason is... George Springer is different than any other player they have on that team. And I'm saying this because he's won a World Series, he's played in the postseason, he's a veteran, he's been there and done that. Uh, he can play center field with a decent defense. You know, later on in his career, at the end of this contract, maybe he moves over to left field or right field. He brings a really, really good veteran impact to that offense that they didn't have before. Um, and it addresses a huge area of need. They didn't have a center fielder, they didn't have great outfield defense, and he brings postseason experience to a team that's most likely going to get second place in this division behind the Yankees. So they're going to make the postseason. I know they made the postseason last year, but they only played a couple games, lost to the Rays, so that doesn't really count. George Springer's played in two World Series, played in a bunch of ALCSs, so he does a lot for them that they didn't have before which is really good. I like it a lot for them. Not to mention, they also signed Marcus Semyon, and this isn't... I'm not saying the combination of them is the best offseason move, but I think George Springer alone is the best offseason move for any team. And, and again, I know this sounds crazy, but it's a hot take. It's true. But that's, I'm, that's what I'm going with. The Blue Jays addressed the biggest area of need that they had and got, went out and got their guy. They stole Springer for the Mets because the Mets had a need in center field. Um... Springer does more for the Blue Jays' offense than Trevor Bauer does for the Dodgers' pitching. 
And then again with LeMahieu and Ramuto, they just resigned with their former teams and they didn't fill holes that were existing before. They, th did those guys need to resign with the teams? Absolutely. It would be a huge loss if neither of them did. But George Springer wasn't on the Blue Jays before. They didn't have a center fielder before. He's a huge upgrade over anything they had before. Not to mention, he's really, really good, and he's not even that old. He's been, I know you could talk about whether or not they cheated, but he did win the World Series MVP back in 2017 when they did win it all. Uh, he's been really good in every postseason that he's played in and every regular season postseason. I'll show you guys his baseball savant page for now. It's incredible. It's ex definitely a guy you want to have on your team. And he does, I, I just can't express enough how much, I mean, guys like Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, Kevin Biggio, all those guys, they needed Teoscar Hernandez. They needed a veteran in pres presence in the lineup to show them how to do it, how to go about business every day, how to play in the postseason, because now that's what's important. It's a failed season for the Blue Jays if they don't make the playoffs. They're clearly all in right now. They're similar. They're in a similar spot as the Yankees, where the season doesn't really begin until October. Now, I'm not saying that Toronto's going to have as much pressure as the Yankees are, but it's they're in a similar situation where it's a it's absolutely playoffs or bust, and they need to make a deep playoff run, show that fan base that they're really in it to win it. They went all in. They signed a lot of players. They signed. They used a lot of money the last two years, so. They definitely need to, and they did got their guy with George Springer, and he's going to help them out a ton to do that. As a Yankee fan, I'm scared of the Blue Jays a lot more now that they have Springer because of the impact he's going to have on all those young guys and the production he's going to bring himself and the center field defense he's going to play. He's going to make the pitchers better for them. So he does a lot for them that the other players don't necessarily do on the teams that they signed with. I think Francisco Lindor, Francisco Lindor and George Springer are they are very close to being the best move of the offseason. But I do have to go with George Springer just by a hair, by a little bit, as the best move this offseason. But I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Leave a like down below. Let us know you guys want to see more content like this. Hit that subscribe button. We are so close to giving it away. You guys know you want to be entered in the giveaway for the jersey and free copy of Home Video Show 21. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.